Good morning, welcome to day 11. Today we're going to look at transformations of the sine and the cosine curve. When we say this, we mean if we have a function f of x equals sine x, transformation of that will have the form g of x equals some number a times sine, of some number b times x plus some number c plus d. I could have any or all of this A, B, C, or D. You could have only the A, only the B, only the C, only the D, or any combination of those. Recall that we talked about the period of the sine function. And the period was 2 pi. And we talked about the amplitude of a sine function. And the amplitude was 1. Here, what we'll see is the period of this function is going to be 2 pi period of the original trig function over b. And the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a. If a is negative, it reflects the sine curve across the x-axis, but if a is positive, it reflects there. It's just the amplitude is just a. So how do we see this? Let's look at one simple one to start with. Let's say we have some h of x equals three sine x. This is a transformation of the original sine function. Recall, we're going to do this with just one period of the sine function, and then you could just continue to follow the pattern. This is pi, and this is 2 pi. That would be pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. When we graphed the sine function the other day, we saw that its range went from negative 1 to positive 1. We knew that pi over 2, the sine was 1. At 0, the sine was 0. At pi, the sine was 0. At 3 pi over 2, the sine was negative 1. And at 2 pi, the sine was 0. We can always go back to our unit circle and get those values if we need them. Sine at 0 and 2 pi are both 0. Sine at pi is 0. Sine at pi over 2 is 1. And sine at pi and 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Recall, the graph looked like a curve, a wave. This is the graph of y equals sine x. So the only difference in this graph and h of x is going to be the amplitude here. It's going to be the absolute value of 3 or just 3. So if we want to graph h of x, everything else will stay the same. The period will stay the same. So the period's just 2 pi over b is 1 now. Instead, remember the amplitude is the height above the midline on the curve. sine of 0, pi, and 2 pi are all 0 still, but because the amplitude has changed to 3, at pi over 2, instead of having going to 1, it goes to 3. And at 3 pi over 2, instead of going to negative 1, it goes to negative 3. So what this has done is vertically stretched the curve. Still looks like a wave. Remember, don't make jagged saw teeth. That's one cycle of the curve. h of x equals 3 sine x. What if we had, let's say, p of x is equal to sine 2x. This one, the period, is going to be 
two pi divided by two or pi. All that means is the graph will complete one cycle in pi units instead of two pi. It'll still have the same characteristics. It'll just be a shorter cycle. So it'll be like compressing this function horizontally. The amplitude's still the same. The only thing changed here is the period. It's still going to have part of it that goes up and then down and comes back. It's still the same cyclical function, just shorter period. Instead of making this pi and this 2 pi, this can be pi over 2, and this can be pi. Still, sine of 0 is going to be 0. The sine of pi over 2 times 2, that's going to be a sine of pi, that's still 0. And the sine of 2 pi is still 0. But now, when we plug in pi over 4, because the period or the amplitude is still the same, the amplitude is still 1, it's going to 1 halfway between the zeros, and then at 3 pi, I'm sorry, 3 pi over 4, halfway between pi over 2 and pi, it's going to negative 1. The curve looks the same, but only a shorter period. Now, what about the C and the D? We call this a phase shift, but it's really a horizontal shift. Shifts the curve. Shifts the curve. Negative C over B. If this turns out to be a negative number, then this is a shift to the left. If it turns out to be a positive number, it's a shift to the right. But the phase shift is the opposite of C divided by B. Let's look at one. Let's say we have, for now we'll just leave B1, equals sine X plus pi. So now, the period and amplitude are still the original of the sine function. The period's going to be 2 pi, the sine of the amplitude's going to be 1. This time, the phase shift is the opposite of C. C is pi now, negative pi, divided by B. B is an understood one. So the phase shift is negative pi. And that means it's going to shift the graph pi units to the left. So let's start. Period's 2 pi, so I'm going to make pi and 2 pi. <coughs> the original y equals sine x would have looked like this. important points here. If we can get these right, we can sketch the curve. Well, the zeros and the max and the min. This shifts the graph pi units to the left. So it takes this point, the zero, and takes it to negative pi. It takes this point at pi and shifts it to zero, and this point at two pi and shifts it to pi. Left pi units. It takes this this is pi over 2. Shifts it left pi units, so that would go to negative pi over 2. And it takes this point, the minimum, and shifts it from 3 pi over 2, pi units to the left, so that would shift it to pi over 2. And so the curve, the graph, of q of x equals sine x plus pi has a phase shift of negative pi or pi units to the left 
And so this would be the graph of y equals sine x. This is the graph of this q of x equals sine x plus pi. Just a shift to the left, pi units. So what about the d? What does the d do? The d, let's do another one, let's say, let's call this one t of x. And let's say this one's going to be sine of x, and then outside of the sine function, plus 2. The d, go back up here, the d is a vertical shift. It just shifts the curve up or down. And that's just straight D, whatever D is. If D is positive, it shifts up. If D is negative, it shifts down. So if we're going to graph the curve T of X equals sine X plus 2, when I ask you for these graphs, I'll only ask you for one cycle. As you can just continue on forever. Recall the domain of the sine and cosine function are positive infinity, negative infinity, negative infinity, positive infinity, and uh, the range from negative 1 to 1 of the original. I might ask you for the range here. The range here would be from negative 3 to positive 3. All the rest of these so far, the range would still be negative 1 to 1. This one's going to have the same period because b is 1, so 2 pi over 1 is 2 pi. The amplitude is still going to be 1 because A is 1. So we're going to set up for that. The original sine function, y equals sine x, if we were to graph it, would look like this. But we want to shift that function two units up. Vertical shift two units up. So we're going to take this point zero at zero zero and move it up two units. We're going to take this point at pi over 2, 1, and move it up 2 units. Take this point, pi 0, and move it up 2 units. Take this point at pi, 3 over pi over 2, negative 1, and move it up 2 units. And take this point at 2 pi 0, and move it up 2 units. And so the graph of the curve. This would be t of x plus sine x plus 2. And this was the curve, y equals sine x, that we used as a basis to transform. And that's how you do transformations of sine and cosine. Sometimes they'll have multiple transformations together. And you might have to do, when you have to do multiple transformations together, work from the inside out. Do the, the, uh, horizontal compression first, the uh, period first, then do the vertical shift, or horizontal shift, phase shift, then do the amplitude, and then do the vertical shift. That would be the easiest way to do that. So if you have to do multiple transformations first, do the period, then do the phase shift, Then do the amplitude, and finally do the vertical shift. You probably won't see any that have all of those combined right now.